G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with Dia and welcome to our first of our team previews for 2024. We had to get the great man on, I'll introduce him in a sec. When I say introduce him, everyone who watches this channel will certainly know who the man is. But first, Spilsy, my man, how have you been, bloke? We haven't uh, chatted in well on a video sort of sense for a while, mate. We've been on the phone for a little while, but for all the viewers that haven't caught up with you, mate, how have you been, legend? How are things? Yeah, not, yeah, not too bad. Um, pleasure to be here, lads. I did a um, team update over the weekend, first upload for the year, and I actually shared that story about how I lost and got my wallet back. I, I, oh, it was like a shorty team update, mate. I was talking, <laughs> I was talking absolute shit for about ten and twelve minutes before I even showed my side. I think told, told the story, <laughs> and then also discussed about the other off-season stuff we've been doing. Dr. with um. Jonathan, the Soul Play, finally getting some Supercoat Soul Play merch on the website, which is just like the most exciting thing ever. I cannot wait to to shred that when it comes out. So just just a bit of housekeeping stuff. So yeah, didn't get into it for for a while, but I'm absolutely rattled with Supercoat. So um, yeah, this is a good as the time as any to do an Adelaide Crows team preview with the with the absolute goat. I must, if I'm being honest, boys, I don't have a single Adelaide Crow player in my team as we speak. So Hopefully, George can sort of sway me the other way. But, um, yeah, I'm just keen to get into it, boys. Been absolutely flat out. But, um, yeah, keen to double back into Supercoach. That's for damn sure. We'll need to get at least one player in there by the end of the video. That's right. Um, you must have a I'm Crows. In, That's it. That's it. Well, look, you, you've already mentioned who this great man is. But for anyone that has been living under a rock, we do have the great George from Fantasy Take TV. Almost got... That one, absolutely wrong. almost butchered that one. But uh, look, <laughs> if you don't know this man, as I said, I don't know where you've been. He has a Discord following of I don't know how many thousand by now. And look, this is how jealous I am of this man. Doesn't watch a game of cricket. You know, a couple of games in a hotel room, I've heard. It comes around the 300 mark in the BBL yeah, really version of Supercoach. So as, as Bill said, here's a goat. George, welcome to the channel, mate. Thank you very much for coming on, my friend. Uh, pleasure to be here, boys. No, good to catch up with you guys. Um, yeah, can't wait to get into some content. I think over the preseason, or this year and a bit of last year as well, I think the focus was to have a good start in fantasy after last year. It was an absolute disaster. I think it was 20, 30K after round one. And that's when you're like, maybe it'll ease in like round four or five, it'll even out. Nah, we'll still with that rank. So I got the starting team wrong last year. But played AFLW fantasy and BBL fantasy and got the starting team right. A lot of, lot of effort and I think finished around 200 and 300 in, in each, which was good. But now I need, need to convert that to super coach and um, see how we go. But yeah, glad to be here and looking forward to speaking about my boys, the Crows. Well, there is no one better to speak to when it comes to the Crows. Now, there are a few relevant players, I think, this year, particularly with a pretty decent buy. I only have the one buy, obviously. So... Let's have a look. We're going to start off in defense. We've got a slide that we're going to add here. Hopefully the formatting's right. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So the first bloke we've got here is one of my favorite crows simply because he was an X line. There's a couple of blokes, a couple of X lines that we'll be touching on in this video, but we've got Mitchie Hinge. So 474,300 available in defense, 25 years old, did play 22 games last year. I think durability has been a bit of an issue for him in the past, but good to see 22 games from him. An average of around 85, close to 20 disposals, contested around six and a half. There are a couple of tackles, average about two kick-ins a game, play on percentage of 98%. So really nice playing percentage. I wonder if George would be able to tell us if he's looking to maybe gain a little bit more of that kick-in pie. That'd be interesting to know. And currently owned by under one percent of sides so george we're going to go straight to you mate what do you think about mitch hinge does he have any relevance to super coach this year or with the other options we've got possibly around the price or, or just above is he one that we can pretty much just skip past quite easily mate yeah he's uh you know he's a tough nut um yeah he's a really good player really developed really well good bargain pickup for the crows had multiple um shoulder I'm not sure about Rico's but dislocations but that seemed to have settled seems to settle at the moment I think it was post by did 90 plus post by might have been 95 or something or even more um somewhere in that high mid to not high 90s so had a really good post by uh, I look at Hinge and I think well we've got Miller back there we've got 
Brody Smith back there. Every now and then, one of them might rotate on a wing. I'm not sure. I know Hinge can do that, um, but I still think he'll be mostly defense for the whole year. He's been a good pickup. I think he'll be a high-scoring flanker. Um, is there enough upside? Because, uh, you know, yeah, Miller and Smith get a bit of usage too. So I don't think there's enough upside in the pick, but I think there is upside. So uh, for me, he's a pass, but like it's not the worst worst pick. So a little, little bit on the price, but not enough to be top six, top eight. But you never know. He's on the right trajectory. But I prefer to go a bit more proven elsewhere at this stage. Beautiful. I'd absolutely agree with that. Spills, anything you want to add on Mitchie Hinge, mate? Um, No, not really. I think he's both covered pretty well. He's, if I'm being honest, he's someone that I've completely not given any thought on this whole preseason. I love him as a player. I've just got a lethal left peg on him. And how good was he as a rookie like a year or two ago now? Um, I think he was, a, he was even a massive pod then. And yeah, he was just unbelievable when he first came to the Crows. But um, yeah, I just don't, at that price, like, he's nearly 500k, which is, you know, another 100,000 100, on that. It's almost like a Harry Sheasel. So you sort of, I just feel like he's got fake primo written all over him. If he was like 100k cheaper, wasn't that real mid-price of territory, then yeah, maybe. But yeah, I just don't know specifically how much upside there is. Like, maybe you can boost his average up to a up to a 90, 95 best case scenario, but that's not really keeper territory. And an 84.9, 85 average. Yeah, I don't really see the urgency to, as picking him, but maybe one you can keep in mind in your draft side. But in in classic, yeah, um, absolutely not, unfortunately. But yeah, I think he's covered pretty well. All right, so all agree at this stage, Hinji is a pass. Now, the next bloke, if we look at his value, selected by many sides this year, pick number eight for the Crows, currently managing a bit of a knee issue, which... Yeah, maybe a slight concern for some owners. I've currently just taken him out of the side in favour of a cheaper rookie defender at the moment. But, George, have you got any updates on Daniel Curtin? We know that he's a really talented type player. I know that lots of draft pundits said that he was a bit of a bargain pick for you, even at that pretty decent pick at eight. Can you give us a bit of an update on how Dan Curtin's going at the moment, particularly managing that knee issue? Yeah, this is a big one. I was so excited when we drafted him. I jumped off, jumped out of the chair <laughs> just to get like a top tier talent like I him. Was gutted. Um, we had the next pick. I was like, oh no. no Caddy might be right for you. Play, mate. But he bidding on, you've always bid on our picks. Blake Coleman, who, oh, that was shocking. Fucking dodo. Anyway, yeah. won't even talk about <laughs> him. Sorry, George. Yeah, uh, no more dodo now. So that's all right. But <laughs> oh, look, oh, I don't have Curtin at the moment. I think uh, as of today, he's still not training or not in full training. Not sure what's going on. I'm not sure what position he plays because we've got Worrell as the third tall, and then we've got, I think it'll be Butts and Keane as the two key defenders, plus three flankers and Max McLaney. That's seven defenders. So he's sort of the eighth defender, unless he takes like Jordan Butts' spot as a key defender. So I'm not exactly sure what his role is. And limited preseason as well. Had the hammy last year. So he's probably missed a fair bit of training over the past four or five months. Uh, I don't, he's not in my team, but like he, a lot of his good scoring, I think was in the midfield in juniors. So that might've inflated his scoring. So I think it's still a bit up in the air. What, like what type of defensive role is he going to play? I think he will play. I just think he's got big wraps on him. They like him. He's got the right physique ready to play at AFL level, but just a few uncertainties. Like, yeah, what's his def actual role exactly? Exactly. You know, how fit is he going to be before round one? He's not in my side at the moment. He is a rookie, so like I haven't actually seen him play. Uh, I've only seen highlights and stuff. So, like a draft expert would be more across this than um, than me. But for me, he's a a watch at the moment. He's not in my team. If he's worth paying up for, then I'll grab him. But I think we've got like some decent options, like a Trezice. I think Sam's been been playing in the ones on kick-ins for Richmond. So I turned Curtin into him for now. Um, see how we go. So uh, long way away. Just a watch. He's out my team for now. Beautiful, mate. Spills, uh, you mentioned at the start that you don't have any crows in your side, so we know that you don't currently have him. Is there anything you can add there, mate, or explain why he's currently not in your side? Oh, he just seems so injury riddled early, and from all from what you were telling me before we got on air, Dr. Is he's actually had sort of knee injury problems before he got drafted, and Adelaide clearly took that into consideration. But he's he's sort of. 
he's sort of exposed to a higher training standard now. It's not like not like sort of waffle or juniors. He's playing AFL footy, so that can't be good on his knee. And I don't think the Crows will rush him at all. I'd be I'd probably be surprised if he did play round one. So just on that, I'd rather just have a I don't know have spent money elsewhere and then pick a player at one seventy five k that we don't even know if he's going to play, let alone what his role is. So look, there's just so certainty and and he's in buddy he's in like 50 54 percent of sides or something like that i'm pretty sure which is a very highly owned pick not to own but yeah, yeah. this is why you click on the video to get these insights and maybe that, that percentage of people don't actually know um and, and sorry I the, fault, mate. The, the good thing is that his price 175k is very easy to downgrade so even if you've got him as a placeholder at the moment it's definitely not the worst thing in the world you can go down easily to a gibkus a whore whichever one of those cheaper type plays a caulfield that you don't currently have so i don't mind him as a placeholder at the moment but definitely a wait and see but uh i'm not ruling him out but currently not my side either that's it for the defenders boys i think let's move on to the midfield now this bloke last year I think I've just got nightmares from round one because I didn't own him the year before. Absolutely killed me. I thought there is no way I'm not starting with Rory Laird in 2023. But after round one, I thought, what on earth have I done here? But really did manage to pull things back to an average of close to 117. They're close to third disposals on average as well. He has hit that, well, do we call it the magical 30 mark? I don't know if there's too much magic about it, but I know George... You've got a few rules. I don't know if you call it rules, but just the way that you like to set up your starting side, you, you, you are a little bit wary of age. And I know when players get to 30, some can start to fall off a cliff a little bit here. He did regress. We can see there minus 11 from his 2022 average. So although he had a really great season last year, he did lose over 10 points from the year before. So I suppose the first question I'd just throw out to you, mate, and you certainly may not have all the answers here, but what's your theory on why he went minus 11 from the year before? Was it someone like a Dawson that was damaging through that midfield, ate up a little bit more of his time? Can you put your finger on why he may have regressed slightly last year, mate? Uh, probably Dawson eating into his score. If you look at uh, 2022, it was basically led and Barry. Barry was getting like 10 tackles a game, but only like 16, 17 touches. So no one was scoring anything in the midfield. It was just Laird pretty much had the midfield to himself. Uh, one year over, um, 2023, a year older as well. Like just Players generally regressed 29 slightly from 28. Um, Dawson into the midfield, uh, obviously had the heat game in round one, probably hurt his average was basically subbed three times, was subbed twice and set out of, um, actually might've been subbed once and then set out a That's fourth right, quarter. You're right. And then, an, yep. and then another one, yep. he didn't get a touch in. And that was in that yep. period where he got um, calf issues. So if you take out, like, I guess you can pick and choose. You take out those three like calf games where I think he scored like nineties or anyway. Um, and like round one, I think is an anomaly. You probably would have gone like low one twenties, which is still not a big regression. Plus you add, Dawson in there, crouched towards the end of the year, which actually seemed to help him. Um, not to 2022 standards, but still, like, I think it was 120 plus to finish the year. Um, I think that's why. As, as a general rule, I don't start midfielders at max price that, that are starting the year at 30, uh, just because there's regression risk because of the age. Um, I th there's barely been a midfielder who averaged 110 plus starting the year at 30. Obviously, Libba did it this year. I think Pendles did it in the COVID year. And then you have to go, I think you have to go back a long way, unless I'm missing someone um, that averaged over 110 uh, that are over 30. I think these days it might happen more often just with how good um, off-field stuff is. But uh, look, for me, I'm not starting lead at that price due to, due to his age, but like, it wouldn't surprise me if he did 110 plus again. But um, yeah, still the main man, probably in the midfield. So I think he's fine, but yeah. Just the age scares me off. Pretty simple. I'm, I'm a little bit with you there, mate. Look, one in 10 teams currently own him. Spills, are you uh, a fan of Rory Laird? Maybe as an upgrade selection during the year, mate? Oh, definitely as an upgrade. Like, hands down, I think we can pick him up for definitely low 600Ks. Um, 600K. 
any sort of game above 35 degrees, we might get him in the 400 mark. You never know. But starting <laughs> pick, there's just yeah. no way. Like, I, I'm spending up for Bonham Pally. I can't justify paying 650K for an M2. I, I do worry about Roy Laird. And not that he's a bad starting pick, but I just think there's better. I mean, look at LDU. Look at Tom Green. I know Tom Green's got a bad buy, but you can turn him into Welsh, like, literally the next week. I mean, you compare his 2020. I want to say 21 numbers. I think it was like 130. So it definitely dropped a little bit. Not too bad, but look, six, six, 653K, that's like absolute max. So I reckon you can just pick him up further down as an upgrade target. That's what I reckon. Not really someone I'm looking to start, but I agree with you boys. All right. Well, it may be either this man or his teammate, the Capitano, Jordan Dawson. So what a pickup this man's been from the Swans. The Swans was viewing as well. They did not want to let him go. But the Crows knew what they were getting. Obviously an SA boy, but 26 now coming into his absolute prime. 115.9 for his average last year. Obviously a defender, then gained some DPP status. This year, mm -hmm. only a midfielder. Now, I know lots of people have a bit of concern about selecting a pure mid that's come from some DPP, like your Dawson, or it might be like a Rosie or even someone like a Butters, who I know is going to be a very popular pick this year. But I certainly wouldn't let that scare you off. Career best season from the man. Sometimes when the players get the captaincy, they can have a little bit more pressure on them, but didn't really seem to affect this man too much. Obviously, I think it was the first couple of games started back and then really got into that midfield role. So we can see there, lethal left foot, really, really positive kick to handball ratio as well. But George, can he back it up? And you think that he is a legitimate option for a top eight midfield average this year? Oh, absolutely. Every chance for top eight mid this year was unbelievable last year. We'd love to get the ball into his hands. Um, it's our best user by a mile. I don't mind Dawson. I don't have him. Um, we saw the last five, six games, his average dropped a little bit, especially his dream team score, which was like high 90s uh, when Crouch came into the side. Because when you've got another a third mid, like our third mid last year, when you look at total CBAs, was Rory Sloan for the whole year. Wow. Matt okay. Crouch didn't play much. And that was only in the 30s. So we, that third mid was quite like rotated a lot. Like if some of the kids went in there, Keys went in there for a bit, it was just very much in and out. But once we had a stable guy getting 30 touches a game in Matt Crouch in there, those disposals came from Dawson, not Laird for some reason. Um, so that is a slight concern. And I don't know if that continues. Was it like Dawson just getting tired first year in the, in the midfield towards the end of the year, or was it just Crouch affecting him? I'm not sure, but the numbers say Crouch, you know, the numbers of him went down with Crouch coming in, but I think it was still 1-1-2 one, one, average with Crouch, which is still fine, but the dream team like dropped dramatically, like a good 20 points, 15 points or something like that. So um, I think he's okay pick. I'm just not sure. And he's just too good. Perfect age though. Like I'd probably take Dawson over Laird just because of the age. 26, perfect age, just in his prime. Uh, I don't have him at the moment, but he could end up in my team. I'm not sure, but um, probably looking elsewhere at the stage. But yeah, it'd be hard to watch Crows games and not own him for sure. So <laughs> I don't know. Not in my team though at the moment. I can relate to that when I trade out dunks last year, mate. Yeah, it's it's absolutely shocking. Spilsy, anything you want to add on Jordan Dawson, mate? Yeah, well, just looking at the stats there, like. Averaging just shy of 116 with only 27 disposals. Like, that just shows how much of a high-impact player he is. I love him. I reckon he's an absolute jet. And as you said, uh, George, coming into his prime. So he's a fantastic pick. Um, definitely a pod. But, again, a lot of uncertainty about the crouch factor and who comes in as that third sort of mid. He's a very um, utility. He's a, bit of, yeah, he's a bit of a utility. So they can play him down back a little bit if they want to. Like, I just... You're paying absolute max for him again, the same as the same as Rory Laird. I just think there's a couple more uh, other options down Swain's wards, and he's just someone I haven't really considered. But upgrade target 100%. I'm definitely looking at him down the line, but I don't think the ownership's going to cost you too much. A little bit of a pod, so just just keep tabs on him, see how he goes. But um, I haven't had him once in my team so far. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but um, yeah, I think people are overlooking him this year and. Yeah, I'm one of them. So 
hopefully you can have a really good season. Back up what was a incredible sort of breakout for him, I suppose. Yeah, I, I think this bloke's an, an absolute star. Now, we can segue now into the next bloke who we've brought up a couple of times already. Now, George, you know I'm always right onto your videos, mate. Everything you put out, mm. I've got the notification bell on. I noticed early on that you're a pretty big advocate for the Matt Crouch selection. When the team picker came out, I put this bloke in my side. He, he, he's now left it, but he's certainly right in the mix for me. So this is probably the conversation I've been most looking forward to because out of all the Crows players, maybe apart from from a curtain who we, we can't really say too much about at this stage, this is a bloke who I'm really realistically looking to start with in my side. So very quickly, 28 years old. So none of that 30 mark. For some reason, I just thought he was a little bit older. 29 pushing that 30 mark, but only 28 years old at the moment. Seven games last year for an average of 97.6. But if we quickly look to the right, without that sub game, and one of those games was a sub game, the average actually goes up to 108. So if you're looking at 490,800 under 500K for a potential average of 108, I like what I see. He's always been a ball pig. Again, 26.7, take into account, He's had that sub game. That is including that sub game. So I'm sure that pushes a 30 mark. Five tackles, that CBA rate, 67%. Now, one thing you did mention, George, was that without Crouch, it was really Laird and Dawson. And that third rotation was every man and his dog. It was like the, the Crows, the Adelaide Town Bicycle, to be quite honest. But now that Matty Crouch has sort of re-entered the fold again, do you think that that CBA rate of 67% do you think he can maintain that and will maintain that going into this season? So they'll pretty much have the big three in Laird, Dawson and Matt Crouch. What are your thoughts about that, mate? Before I ask, before I get into that, can I ask why you took him out of your side? I, I'll tell you why. And this is this is a little bit of a, a, a preview into one of the changes I made in my side. I wasn't sure with Matt Crouch, and this is a huge question, that I've got number two down there about whether he's a stepping stone or a or an M8, potential M8. I've currently downgrade. Oh, is it a downgrade? It's around the same price. I've gone Nick Martin. And the reason so is because I believe he's a potential top 10 defender. So when I select Martin, I'm thinking he's getting DPP. Well, I'm assuming he will be playing that role. And I think he can score well enough if it's a Sheasel slash Dacos early type role to actually... Get a decent average up. Will it be 108? Maybe not. I don't think that. But that's my thoughts around it, mate. But in your opinion, if you can justify that that you think he's a potential M8, then I'm quite happy to make that switch again. The whole thought process of leaving Crouch was the big question mark over whether or not he's going to be a keeper by the end of the year. When we say keeper, you got your bond standards, and then your, your M8 to, say, M12 type standards. That's the reason behind that, mate, why I took him out of the side. What are you viewing him as? A stepping stone or, or an M8? Are you keeping him? That's a good question. Um, so I'll answer, answer your first question. Like, can he keep up the CBAs? Yeah, yep, I think yep. he definitely will. He's having a great preseason. Um, so what is he? Is he a keeper or is he a stepping stone, like with the last buy? Uh, his issue has always been time on ground. It's mid seventies, which is like, it's very hard to be top eight mid with 75% tog. You're competing with guys mid eighties to low eighties sort of thing. So, uh, I think he's a buy flip and I think we can get one Oh five plus from him. Um, if that's not enough for whoever is looking at him, that's, that's fine. Um, we have all these extra trades now. And I figure, what are we going to use these trades for to get more points? And for me, if he can play through round one, rounds one to 14, and then pick any mid I want, if I can afford him at that stage and flip him over, um, that's sort of my plan. Because you might be able to get 50, 60, 70, maybe more points. Plus, you get the advantage of starting him at a cheaper price than what his true average could have been this year. So that's the logic behind that. So I see him as a buy flip. Um, if you can get him, like, Potential keeper M8, but I think that's low, low chance just because of the time on ground and historically he hasn't really gone 110 plus. So that's my logic for that. Um, if you're going for like a Nick Martin, who I'm heavily weighing up as well, um, 
he has more key potential, obviously, because the floor for a defender is much, uh, much lower than it is for a mid. So that makes more sense. You probably go for the keeper over Matt Crouch then. Um, but honestly, in um, September, October, Matt Crouch was in my spreadsheet side and he's been there all along pretty much. Um, I, I just think it goes a little bit beyond stats. I think he's just in, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's in revenge mode, had a great preseason. And I, there's no way I would pick Laird or Dawson before Crouch. Um, just way better value. So, uh, look, he, he's a lock for me. Um, yeah, I think the CBA role will hold. I think he'll, he's also changed his game style. So I wanted him delisted like a year ago. <laughs> he's, been, he's changed how he's played. He drives the legs a bit more, uh, tries to move the ball forward quicker because he used to just go for those dinky handballs, like quick, just get a quick disposal off, put people in bad positions. But to his credit, he's been always been one of the hardest workers at the club. And he's changed his game and he's looking brilliant, looking a bit broader through the shoulders to his preseason. So I'm a big fan. I think he can go 105. Even he could push 110. It wouldn't surprise me. And I'll take that for his price. So um, that's what I think of him. But yeah, probably enough time on Matt Crouch, but uh, he's in my side. But I do think most likely he will be a buy flip on his final game. That, that's brilliant, mate. I'll, I'll, and I love the justification behind the pick as well. Uh, you know, best case scenario could be that M8, best case scenario. And as you said, we're, we're pushing it. But you're, you're right. Like, based on that, you've got that 108 without the sub game, 105 to 110, it shouldn't be realistic. And I suppose that that mental side of the game, that's huge as well. He's got a point to prove. I'll tell you what, you have, you have almost persuaded me to try to find a spot for this man in my side. You, you really have, George. Spills. Has he persuaded you too to at least yeah. have a really close look at him? Yeah, he's good, George. Um, I knew this would happen. <laughs> the salesman, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We discussed at the start of the video whether or not he could sway me to pick an Adelaide Crows player. I think this bike's probably number one on the list for myself in terms of Adelaide picks. The only reason I dropped him is because there's just so much uncertainty about like those like mid prices and four ninety. I, I think you sort of picked him as a um like a keeper because you, you know, you put another hundred K on that. He's uber primo. So I sort of, I just dropped him because I wanted, you know, 600 K boys. And then like you're calling McKercher, like just straight down. Do you want to muck about there? That sort of awkward price range. But I was unaware that he averaged 108 with, you know, without a sub sub game in there. And look, the way Crouch is going at the moment, he's not getting subs. I, I don't reckon he will. He's definitely going to play week in, week out. And the role is going to be good because you, the, another thing I really like about this pick is he uh, the time on ground, yes, George, it's not that great, but it's not like you can throw him forward or down back. It's either on the nut or on the pine. So at least the role is good. There's no gray area on where he's going to play. He's just going to be a flat-out midfielder, and, and he's having another really good preseason. He's on a price, and he might be a really nice on-field option, at least until the buy where, yeah, you got 40 trades to buy flip whoever you want. I've got some radical plans up my sleeve and there's no reason we can't add some more chaos to the side and, and do a bit more aggressive buy flipping. Nothing else that the 40 trades is for. So I think by the end of this podcast, Matt Crouch may enter my team again, which is quite frustrating in a way because i got to like reshuffle my structure. But yeah, just um, sum it up to a T, George. Um, yeah, and being an Adelaide man yourself, no one had a better read on Matty Crouch and yourself, and yeah, you always reflect back to that grand final year in 2017 where he had the he'd actually broken the record disposals before Titch picked him off the following year. So doesn't do him justice, and um, yeah, chip on his shoulder, mate. I hope he can bounce back and, and be that player again at 28. There's still plenty of time. I mean, he's not on the other side of um 30 yet. So yeah, I'm backing him in for you, mate. We'll see how he goes. Just the last thing to mention before we move on, uh, he had groin issues for like a year and a half. Uh, he's been yeah. over that for about like a year and a half, I think. So um, that kind of that and combination of just didn't fit in with Laird, uh, I think yeah. that hurt him a little bit. But yeah, fully fit, been fully fit for a while now, so it should be all good. Yeah, and one thing yeah. I like what you, what you mentioned, George, as well, is that he's worked on his craft as well. Always been really handball happy. You look at that kick to handball ratio. Not fantastic, but the fact that he's looking to improve there, these are the little things that we need to look for. So real positives for me. Look at how much meat on the bone, 97.6 to 108. So uh, 
Yeah, mate, you've, uh, I think you've almost convinced us both there. <laughs> now, next to a bloke who I thought was a pretty decent player last year, a fair bit of potential. And I must admit in saying this, I don't know a heap about him. It's Jake Saligo. So 21 years old, 21 games last year. So very much mm -hmm. favoured in the 22. 73.1 for an average. So not too shabby mm -hmm. for 21. Hopefully he's going to look to build on that. CBA rate of 19%. So George did mention earlier that third sort of rotation before Crouch got back into the side. Saligo was one of the blokes that would have been rotating through that type of area. A possible wing spot. This year is on the cards. But, George, do you think there's any value in this pick in Jake Sligo? A certain pod, 0.6%, under 1% at the moment. Is that for good reason, mate? Or do you think we need to give him a little bit more respect as a super coach option? He's a good player, uh, not a super coach option. He's sounds like he's trained almost exclusively on the wing. Like when they do, from what I've read, when they do midfield drills, it's Rochelle, Rankin, um, Peddler plus the other three, and I'm not hearing Saligo. Mm. So okay. that's no good. Yep. So not for not for that price. He's also injured at the moment. I'm not sure he plays round one. He's done something to his ankle or something like that. But was having a really good preseason. I think uh, one of the standouts, if not the best trainer, this preseason. But it's a pass. All right, moving on then. Now, this bloke here, wowee, I thought he was going to be the, the new Matt Crouch, basically. <laughs> I thought with Crouch out... Berry is the man. I just, when I think of Berry, I think a tackling beast. He is nuts, isn't he? That, that defensive pressure, it is, it is just immense. Now, George, my biggest question here is, did he fall off a cliff in 2023? Or is it the fact that you've got players like a Dawson that's going through that midfield and maybe there's too many similar type players? Maybe a Rory Led's too similar to him or a Crouch is too similar to him. Can you tell us a little bit about what actually happened to Sam Berry in 2023? I wish I could tell you. I have no idea. I <laughs> I pumped him up big time and it backfired big time last preseason. So I don't know what happened. I, I, would, I wouldn't blame you though. Like I was right yeah. on with you. He was on track. It seemed like he was on track to be that next midfield bull for the Crows. But yeah, he just didn't eventuate in, in the AFL side anyway. 95 fantasy points in the sand full, but he just didn't translate to AFL, mate. He's the biggest draft burner of all time, honestly. Last yeah. year. <laughs> Picking him like sort of like second, third round, and like he was like his real breakout contender. Yeah, what hurts. happened to him? What actually happened? Yeah. He was priced at like four, like I would say like low 400s, like this time last year. Like, what is going on here? I don't know what happened. He, like, barely even best 22 anyway. Like, I'm not sure what's yeah. happening. I remember the preseason, they had like an internal trial Crows game in the preseason. Barry was like the top scorer. And like ever since then, it's just been downhill. He's having a good he's having a good preseason at the moment. At the start of the year last year, the coaches came out on SA Radio. One of them said, there's only room for one of Laird or Crouch. And <laughs> they got proven wrong as things are like <laughs> right the so Barry sort of in that similar mold where he needs to be at CBA. He needs to be at the, the cold face tackling and applying pressure. He's really good defensive mid. Uh, whereas like that half forward role, like Peddler's a good half forward. Um, he kicked like 25, 26 goals or something. Whereas Barry can't really do that from half forward. You got Rochelle there, Rankin there. So uh, it's either midfield or SNFL, I think. I don't know how they're going to fit in Crouch, Barry and Led. They can try, but I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, I guess it's a preseason watch at this stage, but it seems like his spot is t is <clears throat> taken by Crouch. So it's a pass at the moment, but I'm just curious to see how he goes over the preseason. So you can't chuck him in now, just see how he goes. But yeah, the role isn't really open at the moment. Sub yeah, risk we'll as well, I reckon. While we're on that topic, yeah, got all these inside in. moves coming yeah. through. Like perfect yeah. sub candidate if Crouch is a bit underdone or someone goes down, like which could. Completely screw everything, but yeah, no, not not for me, lads. I don't reckon. Well, maybe if it's a matter if someone like a Crouchy does go down, medium to long term, he could get an opportunity. But yeah, I'm absolutely with George, not as a starting pick. Bit of wait and see. All righty, onto the forward line now. I'm not sure how relevant this fella's going to be, but again, an X line, one of my favourite crows, Benny Keys. I've got there an absolute workhorse. This man. 
the ultimate clubman. You just know what this bloke's going to give you each week, and that's just 100% effort. Now, no disrespect to Benny Keys, but he's not a really smooth type player. You wouldn't think that well, you don't really associate great skills with Benny, but damn does, he, damn does he have heart. So I know that a few people jumped on. I think George possibly included last year when he did have that midfield role, had a really nice patch through the year, but the season as a whole, 80.6 as an average, 19.2 disposals, did average a goal a game, and his CBA rate was 24%. So they were the two roles he was really rotating through that mid roll, and then obviously up forward as well. What I like about Benny is that I think he's a, he can actually be a decent damaging type forward, whether or not that's that defensive pressure or that one goal a game <coughs> he's delivered for Adelaide last year. So, uh, George any interest or whatsoever in Benny Keys or with the other blokes that are coming through with Crouch playing through that midfield, do you think it might be just a lack of midfield opportunity for the man? I think his midfield days are done. Uh, would take a few injuries in the midfield for him to be relevant, but I can score well in the midfield when he gets it. But yeah, just I think yeah, the skills can let him down, kicking, even handballing and can fumble a bit on, at ground level too. But otherwise a great gut runner, Found his role. He actually kicked quite a, like average over a goal a game as a forward. So kicked two. A lot of the Joe the Goose sort of goals. Work the defender into the ground stuff. Great role player. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, I think absolutely. does cop it a bit from Crows fans because of his skills at times. But I'm a big fan uh, of Keezy. So nah, he's a pass for for Super Coach. We'll be playing half forward. Yeah. Well, look if his role was as good as his rig, then yeah, lock him away <laughs> and throw away the key. But look up. I just think his average is basically where it belongs. I reckon he's a sort of low to mid eighties man, best case scenario. Yep. And yeah, we are a bit dry on the fall line. I'll, I'll be honest, but at four fifty k, it's just a bit of a dead end selection. I just don't think you're going to go too much higher than that. You know, maybe he works his way up to four seventy, but there's much better options and much better mid prices coming through. Like. My boy Elijah Sardis, I'd rather pay like 200k for him with all the upside. And I think Sardis could even average similar to Keys at almost half the price. So I think we've got to factor that one in, but yeah, yeah not um, yeah. not someone I've really considered. Well, there's 1% of uh, coaches that disagree with us, but uh, yeah, big pass on Benny Keys. Good luck the next on. bloke is Josh Rochelle. So I'm going to go straight down to that CBA rate of 23%. We know what he's like as a forward. He just oozes X factor. I remember, you know, his first few games, you thought, wow, we, geez, do Adelaide have an absolute player here? I don't think his accuracy was as good last year, but 20 years old, obviously really, really early pick. 2023 average was 74. George, this is my question, mate. That CBA rate of 23%, where do you see that lying this year? Is it going to be hard to get an increase given the fact you've got someone like a Crouch there? Or do you think he can maintain the best? Or are you expecting that to even go close to the 15% maybe, mate? I think it will increase a little bit. I think we yeah, we had so many other players rotating through the midfield. Our fourth mid uh, was Schoenberg as well. So he got injured in the last round. So there's a bit of CBAs to go around there. And I think Slater will be taken out completely, hopefully. So there is room for more CBAs. I think that'll jump to maybe 30, 35, possibly a little bit more. When he got CBAs he scored okay he's not consistent yet he's still pretty young a little bit injury prone too and he's a really good forward so sort of the Heaney syndrome where you want him um, you need him forward so long term I'm not sure I think he'll be maybe like 50 50 mid forward eventually okay. um, but yeah he's a pass for me but this is a hard one I don't have the best read on uh, but it seems like he's going to be at best a fourth midfielder, which I'm not sure I want to pay 400 for. So he's a pass for now, but I'm interested to see his progression over the preseason. Well, I think it'd be really exciting as an Adelaide supporter uh, to see how this bloke does progress because, as we said there, just oozes X-factor, star potential. Got a bit of swagger about him as well, which I like, a fair bit of confidence. So I'm a massive fan of Rochelle as a player. Uh, but you're right, George. I think that that role, the fact that, you know, I think of someone like a Toby Green, he could be an elite midfielder, Toby Green, but he's just so good as a forward. So, uh, yeah, absolutely agree with you there. Spilsy, any love for Josh Rochelle, mate, or are you just moving on and passing? 
Oh, I love him. Like, first of all, I'll say, like, you've got a good one here, George. He's going to be a bloody star. Getting kind of rosy vibes all over him, but just he's not there yet. Um, 413K, he's, well, let's be honest, he's priced in no man's land. I mean, what are you going to do with him? I mean, I don't think he's an average much more than what he is. And I think his CBA, his CBA has to go up a little bit, but I just don't think it's going to be enough in terms of value. And, yeah, I'm not really considering him. But if he can boost his um, scoring numbers up, one goal one, <clears throat> which isn't, too flash if you can get that up to you know like 1.8 nearly two a bit of upside but yeah not for me boys so he goes in the next couple of years though might be might be one that we consider if he starts getting a bit more mid time further down the track see what happens with him not for now though all right next bloke maybe in a similar mold but you are saving 100k here it's lukey peddler so left footer really really hard at the ball 21 years old 2023 average, nothing to write home about, only 55.8, but we do see 21 games there. So again, really did entrench himself in the best 22. I know a few Crow supporters that were a little bit surprised that they went for Peddler where they did, the Crows, and thought it was a little bit of a reach. I'm not sure how you feel, George, but for me, I think he's got the talent. I think he's a really decent type player. 1.2 goals per game, so a little bit better than Rochelle there. CBA rate of 13%. So he did spend a little bit of time running through there as well. 1% ownership at this stage. But I think there is lots of competition at or below his price. You're talking your billing types, your Tom Lynch types. I could rattle a few more off. But, George, what do you think about Luke Pedler? Is he someone that's going to be relevant this year? Or, again, just scroll past the man onto the next option? At uh, the start of the year, this year, he was interviewed and he said, oh, I want to be a 50-50 mid-forward this year. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, he, he's a good half-forward. His stoppage craft is pretty good. He just not um, just doesn't accumulate enough. Like 12 possessions a game at half-forward is not enough. I know the role is sort of different, but um, it just I, I haven't seen any evidence of a really strong fantasy game. And there's nothing in juniors to go off really because he was basically injured for most of it. Um, but his injury issues seem to be, be behind him at this stage. I think he's 21, yeah, 21 games there. So had like could barely even put two or three games together previously. So uh, he's a pass for me. You just don't have any evidence of a strong fantasy game. And I don't know what the mid time's going to look like just yet. Obviously, like that second tier, Rochelle, Pedler, and um, who's the other one? Rankin. Apparently they want in the midfield a little yeah. bit too. So uh, okay. I need to see something and I just don't think the mid time will be high enough. And yeah, again, no real evidence of a strong fantasy game at this stage. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe some upside to him is the fact that, as you said, George, he just couldn't get any continuity in his game. The fact he's basically had a full season or close to a full season, maybe that means a little bit of upside that he, he has got used to the, you know, the, the strenuous, oh. AFL environment and the way that the game's played these days, getting his body right. So maybe a little bit of upside there. Spills, do you see any upside in the peddler pick? Look, we're desperate at the forward line. This is why I'm looking to cover a few of these type of picks, particularly speaking with a, you know someone like George, an Adelaide fan, because we're bloody desperate at the forward line, let's be honest. Yeah. So this is why I think we at least need to discuss these type of picks. Do you see any upside yourself to the peddler selection, bud? Well, first of all, I was asking you boys a question. I looked it up while he's while he's talking. How how many games do you reckon he played? Like twenty one, obviously. But how many in those games do you reckon did he score over eighty super coach points? What do you reckon, just straight off the bat? Two. Yeah, I'd guess one. Four. Yeah, it's one. One time he went over eighty points. A lot of it was just in the fifties, sixties, just. Basically scoring where he's priced and so consistently really average type stuff you, you're talking just, here. Yeah, he's like, like he's getting game. Yeah. yeah, at least he's you know he's, at least he's consistent. You know, just consistently underdone and probably someone that we not. I would not. It's like ten foot pole territory. Dr. I just don't, I would not go anywhere near him. Like not only is he scoring in sort of tatters, but he's not the most durable bloke going around as well. I mean. There's yeah. just way too much risk and downside, I think. But I really, what I, what I do like about him, though, just watching him, so super coach irrelevant, is how explosive the bloke is. When he does get up the ground and gets the ball, he's just unbelievable. He's got so much power and penetration on his boot. Like, he could, the bloke could be honestly anything. 
it's just too risky, I reckon, lads. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't select him or go anywhere near him. But I really do hope that he can break out just for the sake of footy, because I reckon he'd be good to watch, hundred percent. But agreed, yeah, not in my agreed. Opinion, that's for sure. All righty, we are getting very, very close to the end now. This man, Elliot Himmelberg, was very keen to actually join his brother at the Giants, and I must admit that I was pretty surprised that they denied the request. Why is that? Well, he's 25 years old. Now, we know that big men take a little bit more time to develop. But in my opinion, by now, if you've got a bloke that's 25 years old, really hasn't grabbed a spot in the best 22 and really entrenched himself in that side, why are you so keen to hold on to him? My thought about that is probably now, given the fact that you've lost a due day, we've talked about Murray and your lack of defensive options at the moment, a lot of that due to injury. But the big news is, is that there's a high possibility that Elliot Himmelberg may actually play as a defender this year. So that's probably the feel that I'm getting as to why the Crows wanted to keep on to him. Nothing to write home about here. Three games last year, 52.3 for an average, under 10 disposals, close to four marks. Nothing fantastic here. But we've talked about how dire things are in the forward line. Lots of us are looking to just stack this with mid-price options at the moment. He's in 0.2% of sides. George, if this bloke does play permanently down back, do you think there's any value to the pick? And is he actually relevant this year in any way, shape or form? No, he's depth only. Um, just seen enough now. So uh, he's had patches where he's looked all right, but then he just regresses and does nothing. So uh, no, I, don't, I think that the Crows held on to him for a key position depth at the moment is pretty um, pretty rare at the moment. So they didn't really want to, like, there was nothing really to gain outside of a bit of salary, like small salary cap space, giving him to GWS. So um, they just chose to keep him. I think he's out of contract this year, so he'll probably request a trade and go there. But uh, no, I mean, I'd be shocked if he was best 22. So no. Easy, mate. Easy. And... We will now finish off with this man, Chris Burgess. Now, he is pretty highly, when I say highly owned, I've seen a fair few teams with Chris Burgess on field as that F6 type position or even shoved to the bench. Now, didn't play too much AFL football, it's fair to say, last year. You can see the one game there obviously came across from the Suns. But we do have a little bit of VFL form here. If we look to the fantasy column, we can see a pretty decent patch there. So, if we see, you know, round 24 and we go down to, say, round 13, there we've got 106, 88, 113, 126, a couple of 50s, but then up to 119. George, where do you see this man actually playing his football? Some people have heard saying he's training as a forward. Other people have said, no, no, he could. Well, we've just talked about Himmelberg. He's in front of someone like a Himmelberg. He may add to that defensive depth. He's certainly been a bit of a utility over his career. First of all, where do you see this man playing his football? And secondly, is there any chance that he could find himself in the best 22 come round one? I've just had a quick squeeze at uh, Big Footy Crows board and the track watcher there says he's trained only forward for the whole season. So okay. whatever you've been told was right there. Uh, so no, like, I, don't, I don't know where he fits in. I, I thought maybe key position defender depth because we have so many injuries there. But we got Taylor Walker, Fogarty, Thilthorpe, and maybe if something happens to Rob, that Rob, they could put Thilthorpe into the ruck, and then maybe one of Burgess or Golant plays that role. Uh, I don't see him playing round one. I've never had him in the in the team, and I only thought of him as depth. So uh, key forward role is even worse. So <laughs> oh, it's a pass for me. It's no. Spilsy, any interest in yeah. the Burge? Or not Massive after that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Anyway. Huge pass. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to lie. I did have him at F6 on my first team. Just on the back of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought if he was playing sort of as a second tall in defence at the Crows because of the injuries, I thought at that price in the forward line, that'd be really nice. Maybe we get a 60 from him. But um, if he's playing forward, yeah, put a line through that. There's no way. Even if he does play like, 129 for a, for, a, for a genuine key forward. I'd rather pay around the same price for a Catters or, um, or a Darcy. With his early draw um, as well. 
Yeah, exactly absolutely. right. Yeah, and probably yeah. better job security as well. So yeah, it's a no for me, but a bit of a shame because wouldn't that have been nicer? One twenty nine k second hole in defence, but would have not yeah. to be unfortunately. Oh well, depth at the moment. So, uh, boys, that is it. All the teams covered. So, uh, George, thank you very, very much for joining us, mate. Uh, look, currently it seems like you're running with Maddie Crouch. Is he the sole Adelaide play that you've currently got in your side, bud? Uh, I'll just have a look. I'm pretty sure it is. I've always got this super coach thing open. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when, yeah. Quite on speed while this bloke. Yeah. Yeah, I've toyed a bit. I've toyed a little bit with Dawson, but no, not at the moment. So just Matt Crouch, yeah. So pretty keen on him. I sort of sort of committed to Matt Crouch, and like half like part of me is just picking him for content too. But I'm big fan <laughs> and big believer. <laughs> I'll be honest. I've my read on the craze was completely wrong last year. So I was going to say that at the start, but then people might switch off. But too late now. Now that it's end of the video, <laughs> yeah, so, you sucked in um, now. Yeah, you made all well, the way to the end. Well, that terrible um, disappointment. That's that's an hour of your life that you're never getting back. So, <laughs> nah. so just do the, if you're staying this long, just do the opposite to what I said. Don't be crouch. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just crouch at the moment. Another player is Dowling. I don't have it at the moment. He's training in the twos, playing on a wing. He's a one twenty three k mid forward rookie. Mm. Uh, I know our wings are Chase Jones and Saligo. Um. If maybe Sloan as well. So maybe if one of those goes down, Dowling could get his opportunity throughout the season. Cool. So one to watch there. But it sounds like he's in the twos at the moment. Ripper, well, uh, Spills, I don't need to ask you many crows you're running with. You're a duck egg, I'm a duck egg at the moment. But I reckon possibly in an hour to an hour and a half's time, we may have one M Crouch sitting in our sides after this chat. I'd tell you what, bloody, bloody tempting me. But, oh. uh, George, before we do finish up, mate, tell us what have you got coming up content-wise because I'm sure everyone's pretty keen to hear if you've got any particular plans or with, with the side or with, with the Discord. What's going on for you in the upcoming couple of months, mate? I'll be honest, mate, no plans at the moment. Uh, my Winging computer's it. It. absolutely cacked it and um, I am using like straight upload um, like no editing at all at the moment. So uh, hopefully in two or three weeks, I'll be able to get this new computer set up. Like my computer's as sick as a dog at the moment, like beeps and makes oh, funny nice. noises. Can't do anything with it. So I'm hoping to have uh, some YouTubers on just for like a round table. Hopefully I can get the computer sorted in time for that. In terms of other content, oh, I'm not too sure. I think we'll do a podcast soon. Uh, and I just only just opened the app for the first time. So I saw that. <laughs> he's just been watching NBA, um, tweeting no, NBA no stuff nugs. for like three months. Yes. So um, we'll definitely you watch him have a better season than all of us. Like, uh, like yeah, season means yeah. nothing. We spend so much bloody time like tinkering around my supercoach side every day. I've got to open at work on my computer all the time. Always look at it. It's there's just no. It's the most unnecessary thing ever. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Just pick a side, like. Oh, it's shocking. But yeah. Yeah, I think keep it. My goal this year was to keep it simple. You know, don't do too much research. And I think I've done more than ever. So maybe need to uninstall that for a few weeks. <laughs> um, and yeah. Oh, we're, we're all good. Sure it, yeah. Well, mate, cannot thank you enough for coming on. Uh, Spilsy, as always, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know you'll be on for a few more of the team previews, but what a way to start. We have to start with the great man, George. Uh, I've, I've just hit a little milestone myself on YouTube, but George, I tell you what, mate, you are the absolute YouTube king, and that's for good reason, mate. You build a terrific community there as well. So I'm looking forward to your upcoming podcast, mate. Whatever content that you put out, I absolutely eat up, mate. So uh, congrats to what you've done so far, as well as JD, as well as NO and the whole uh, crew there, mate. But uh, yeah, congratulations on uh, all your success. And I uh, hope that you'll jump back on the channel soon with us, mate. Thank you very much for coming on again, Legend. No, nah, anytime. Pleasure to be here. And I'm sure your, your content's much more high quality than mine. So you overtake oh, me in subscribes it, in no time. So I've got <laughs> the crown. I need, need, need to hand over to you. So have a good, mate. The two biggest super coach YouTubers in terms of subs. And I'm just here, just, just in the corner watching you guys. Oh, definitely feel our place. But to both of you is i think i think george you're still up like i think you're still number one 
But Diaz, he's, oh, he's not by, going to war, man. By a country mile, this man. Oh. By an absolute country mile. Just, uh, and we've got number one and number two for Supercoach subscribers. So, yeah, I'm in great company, that's for sure. <laughs> now we are in time with you, George. Six years ago, but yeah, no, it's good fun. Nah, oh, good on you, mate. Great. Well, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. At this stage, we're all pretty keen on Maddie Crouch. Maybe have a sniff around your Dawson or your Laird type picks. But apart from that, I think most of these players are a bit of wait and see and possibly maybe a bit of an upgrade option during the year if they absolutely play out of their skin. So thanks again. Much appreciated. The next team preview coming up will be the Hawthorne team preview with Steve from SDS, an absolute legend. Unfortunately, he just recorded a fantastic yeah. video, a great discussion with George, but the audio yeah. absolutely went dead on it. So, uh, look, oh, yeah. you can oh, still man. check it out. As I said, not the best quality audio-wise, but uh, poor old Steve would have been shattered with that. But I'm looking forward to catching up with the great man tomorrow night for our Hawthorne team preview. And the next one will be the North team preview with my man, Big J from the Send Bound. So thanks again, guys. Much appreciated. We'll see you soon in the next one. Cheers, See bye. You boys.